So um, what we're going to do for this one is I'm going to show you how to use a translation. Now, okay. if you guys uh, find this, we'll find the amplitude and period really quickly. So the amplitude, remember, is your absolute value of your A. So the absolute value of 4 is going to give me 4, right? Everybody got it? Your period. Period is going to be 2 pi over B, where B is 1. So that's going to be 2 pi over my B, which is 2 pi over 1, which equals 2 pi. Right? Then the last thing you guys notice, though, is there is a shift, a horizontal shift of pi over 4. Now, if you guys are looking at this, if we can remember... The paragraph of cosine is one thing you guys need to notice without looking at the amplitude. The paragraph of cosine, like here's it's, you know, it crosses that one and goes down to negative one, right? Here's the paragraph of cosine. Please pay attention. The paragraph of cosine has endpoints at zero and two pi, right? That's like, I mean, your initial first period of your cosine graph. It has endpoints at 0 and 2 pi. This is where you can say like one cycle is contained in between 0 and 2 pi. So if I'm going to shift it at all, one way we can do this to determine our shift is we can say whatever's inside our parentheses, so we can say x plus pi over 4 is equal to 0, and then x plus pi over 4 is equal to 2 pi. So what I'm doing is I'm taking whatever's inside my function. Now this will work for any graph. You're going to take whatever's inside your function and then set it equal to the end point of one period, which would be 2 pi, and then set it to the end point of your other part of your period, which would be 0. Does that make sense? No? Why you what? Is it zero? what? Place is zero. This, your x value is 0 here, right? That's 0. That's okay. 2 pi. So you're just plugging in the pi over 4. So what I'm, right. So, I mean, because if you guys look at it, if I had just cosine of x, well, we know cosine of x is going to cross at 0 and that 2 pi. So those are like, your first period is contained between those two points. So you guys will see what's going to happen. When I solve for x, I subtract pi over 4. Therefore, I get x equals a negative pi over 4. So what this tells me now is my graph has now, instead of its endpoint at 0, my endpoint is now at a negative pi over 4. Okay. Now this graph actually has an amplitude of 4. So um, let's, uh, let's actually do this correctly. 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's eliminate my paragraph. So it has an endpoint of negative 4 comma pi. Then it's also going to have, um, let's see, then my other endpoint, as I subtract pi over 4, so x is going to equal um, 2 pi times negative pi over 4. Okay, so you need to make that by 4 over 4. So it's going to be 7 pi over 4. So what that's going to tell you is, um, if you look at this, so if here's, okay, here's 2 pi, right? And we have negative pi over 4. Now, remember we talked about um, our important points, right? Mm -hmm. Our important points are um, your, your four ways to split up your function. So if my period is by 2 pi, if I take 2 pi divided by 4, and what I have is that's going to reduce it down to uh, pi, over, pi over 2. So if my original graph would look something like this, here would be pi, here would be pi over 2, and here would be 3 pi over 2. That is my original graph. However, 
they want us to shift pi over four units to the left. And so what that's doing is I shifted it. Actually, that's even smaller, isn't it? Pi over, that's pi units, pi over four would be like right there. So if that unit is pi over two, that unit would be a negative pi over four. So think about it. So if this is two pi, that's the same thing as eight pi over four. So where would seven pi over four be? Right there. This is seven pi over four. This is the same thing as six pi over four, right? So all we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, if I look, so my new point is at two pi over four, going to go right there. Um, and then now between these two points, what I need to do is determine, okay, so if here's my first important point, now my next point is going to be, so I have pi over four, now I need to add it to, one, now I need to add pi over one half. So my next point will be right here, which is a positive pi over four. Then it needs to go down to, it's going to cross that, add another half to this. So pi over four plus, you know, one half is going to give me 3 pi over 4, which will be down here. This is down 4 units, right? So let's make this down. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then add another 1 half to that, and uh, that's going to give me 7 pi over 4. No, 5 pi over 4. And then we cross, like I said, at 7 pi over 4. Get you confused yet? Yeah. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, pretty much assumed, uh, assumed to come through. A couple things you guys just need to remember for this, okay? The, con the numbers can be confusing, but the process doesn't have to be. All you guys need to remember is without looking at your cell phones, because then you're really going to be confused and you're never really going to understand it. But if you guys take your amplitude and you found your period, right? Amplitude and find the period. I take my period and I divide it by one half. What that, I'm sorry, I divide it by four and I get pi over two. So what that means is between every important point, meaning my top, my intercept, my minimum, my intercept, and the end of my period, between each one of those four important points, right? I said there's four important points. Between each one of those, the distance is pi over two, okay? So everybody understands the distance between those two is pi over two. It's an equal distance. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Is, is it necessary to have all the points? No, you could probably eliminate probably some of those points. Like you don't really, we don't really care about what my original graph was using. Okay? If that makes it easier for you to see, then you do that. So then, once I did that, so I figured out that it's between each one is pi over four, then it said you're gonna shift the whole graph pi over four units. Well, you could have, I showed you that before, you could graph it, with, excuse me, without the horizontal shift, and then shift everything a quarter, you know, pi over four to the left, but that can sometimes get confusing. So if you wanna know exactly what your endpoints are, you take, you take whatever your, what's inside your function and you set it equal to zero, which was one of the endpoints of your original function. Then you set it equal to two pi, which is the endpoint of your, the other endpoint of your original function. Once you set it to two pi and a zero, you solve, and now those are your two new endpoints. Then, once I know my two endpoints, to find my next important points, all I had to do, ladies and gentlemen, was to go from here to here. So this endpoint is a negative, negative pi over four, right? So to find the next point, all I did was add pi over two. And that made, got me to here, which was pi over four. Right? You guys can do the, you guys gotta do the math. Then you have pi over four. Well, how do I know how to get to this point? Add pi over two. Then you're at this point. Well, how do you know how to get to this point? Well, that's three pi over four, add pi over two. 
Why do you keep on adding pi over two? Because that's the distance between the important points. Does that help you out at all? I know it's confusing, you guys need more practice with it, but the overall general rule, if you guys can just follow the steps and write, you know, have this written down, you guys can uh, go along. All right? Yes. Where it says um, pi over four, are we, um, where'd that come from? Is it just from um, equation? Pi over four, yes, is that your transformation up here. I told you to shift pi. So whatever that is is what we're going to put in there. Yes. But just make sure it's everything in there because you might have numbers in front of your x as well. Okay. So make sure you include all that. Okay. We used to graph that. What? We used to graph that. 